Good evening, Lizzie Boys, and welcome back to my channel. This is a video that I was wondering if I should make or not, because I've kind of been in my ranking things era again. I've noticed that whenever I get it, like into this mood, I'm just like, yeah, let's just make a ranking video again. It's fun. So today I decided to count down my top five favorite Monster High releases of 2022. We're not going to not include anything. Everything is on the table from alumni releases, Haunt Couture, Skelectors, Howliday, I guess. I'm not going to count Cleo and Deuce, though, but they weren't going to be on this list anyway. So, yeah. Real Drama, Cree Productions, G3. All of it's on the table. Nothing's off limits. So with that, let's just get started. Once again, keep in mind that this is my opinion. It's going to be a pretty positive list, though. Just don't be upset if something that you like isn't on the list. I would like to hear what you guys think, though, so feel free to leave your own top five in the comments below. I always like to read the comments. I read all of them. With that, let's begin. Starting us off strong in fifth place, we have G3 Coffee Break Frankie. This is probably the only G3 doll that I'm going to include on this list, just because I feel like the alumni releases did outshine G3. And for obvious reasons, I'm obviously more nostalgic towards G1 of Monster High, so the alumni releases really do just kind of catch my attention more than G3 dolls do. But that's not to say that G3 is bad by any means. I do really like G3, and I can see how much love and care was put into crafting this new generation. The reason that Coffee Break Frankie makes it onto this list is just because I love this doll so much. I definitely would have put them higher, but they do unfortunately have the drawback of being in the two-pack with Deuce, who is my least favorite G3 doll of all time. Coffee Break Deuce is just bad, and he drags the pack down by a lot. If it were just separate releases for both Frankie and Deuce, it would be much better, but instead they're crammed together into a $50 two-pack where the, the majority of people only want one of the two dolls. That's the main thing holding this doll back. Overall, though, Frankie's gorgeous, and another thing that I do think that they could have done better with this doll, paint detail. Their shoes absolutely needed more paint detail. It's a gorgeous sculpt, but there's little to no paint detail to actually highlight the details of that sculpt, you know? Overall, though, stunning doll, and definitely my fifth favorite doll of the year. Up next, in fourth place, we have Real Drama Laguna. I didn't expect a Laguna doll to be on my top five dolls from Monster High of the year, but I really feel like they outdid themselves with this one. Real Drama was a really good line to begin with. I absolutely love monochromatic dolls. Like, <laughs> there actually weren't that many that I can think of that existed prior to this year, because with the release of Shadow High, then Real Drama, then Voltageous Frankie, it just feels like doll companies have been going all out with monochromatic schemes this year been really nice especially the uh, barbie mark Ryden pink doll she is awesome my mom bought her <laughs> she's so cool <laughs> but um this laguna i just really like her and i actually think that being honest she's my favorite real drama doll and the reason why is because of the white hair that sounds so stupid i know but her white hair is so awesome i love the shade of blue that they chose for her too just everything about this Laguna really works for me. I also like that they gave them much longer hair on these releases. It definitely helps to differentiate them from their basics, even though they're already pretty differentiated, given the fact that they're in black and white with a pop of color, you know? Look, I just think that this doll is really well done. She's... I just burped. <laughs> She's probably one of my favorite releases of, like, in doll-wise, like, all year overall. Like, I just really think they did a good job with this one. I really like her. So, despite me not having a whole lot to say, she's my fourth place. I really like this release. Coming up next in third place, we have Haunt Couture Cleo. I remember being disappointed by the doll's face when it first came out. When pictures first came out, I remember I looked at Cleo and Laguna and I was like, meh. Like, I just didn't really care. I don't think disappointment is the right word, actually. It was more like indifference, I guess. Like, I just kind of looked at them and I was like, yeah, they're cool. I'll get them to complete the line. But looking back, I don't know why I reacted that way when this doll is as stunning as she is. I absolutely love the different face mold. And I've said it. I said it in my review. I changed my tune when I saw more pictures of this doll when I got her in person. My opinions change. Everyone's opinions change and it's totally fine. 
basically what I'm trying to say is that even though I may not have had the most positive opinion of this doll when she first came out, actually getting her, looking at her, appreciating all the details on her, I like her a lot. I still think the Haunt Couture line was overpriced, but I don't know, would I be wrong to say Haunt Couture was one of the best lines of any doll line that was released this year? I don't think I would be wrong, it was a gorgeous line. Overall though, Cleo is very well made, I really love her, and she's definitely my third favorite of the year. Up next in second place, and after this we're going to do some honorable mentions as we always do, but up next in second place, Haunt Couture Claudine. Yeah, this list is going in that direction. I love Haunt Couture, I really think they did an amazing job with this line. And maybe I'm just a little extra biased towards Haunt Couture because that was the first package I ever received from Mattel, it was really awesome. Um, in case you're watching this video and don't know the lore of my channel, Mattel reached out and they sent me all three of the first wave of Haunt Couture. Not uh, Cleo and Laguna, they sent me Draculaura, Claudine, and Frankie. And it was awesome. It was like one of the best days I've had in recent years. It was epic. Like, it was just so cool. And this Claudine is just definitely one of Claudine's best dolls overall. I know a lot of people said that they were underwhelmed with her. She's usually ranked pretty low on people's lists, but I adore her. Everything about this Claudine just absolutely works for me. I love her so much. I, I don't think there's anything that I would have done differently with her. Like, I love her socks, I love the shoes that they gave her, it's a gorgeous shoe mold despite the simplicity. Her purse being a reference to her first wave jacket, that's adorable. I love the giant fur coat, it's green lining inside, I love her shirt, I love her necklace, I love her ring. <laughs> Just everything, everything about this doll was great, I absolutely adore her, and I wish that they would use the Haunt Couture faces again sometime. <sighs> I really like the rooted lashes in this line, too. I feel like for this being Claudine's first collector doll ever, like, ever, this is the first time Claudine ever got a collector doll, this is good. This was a great doll for her. So, yeah, Haunt Couture Claudine, second place. I absolutely adore her. There's nothing I would change. Right now, we're gonna move on to some honorable mentions. These are dolls that I would have put on the list, but didn't, because other things beat them out. So, uh, buckle in, there's a lot. <laughs> Up first, I would like to call attention to the Cree Productions. I didn't want to put these dolls on the main, like, best dolls of the year list, because they are ultimately just reproductions of dolls that I already own. This is just me, I don't- I know that there's a lot of new Monster High collectors who cannot get these four dolls because they were so inaccessible, and the same unfortunately goes for the Cree Productions, because despite- being made basically to make the dolls more accessible so that people could actually get them, they were pretty hard to find. I personally never saw these dolls in stores. I know recently some people have been able to find them randomly restocked in their Walmarts, and I think the reason for that isn't because Mattel is still producing them, but is instead because these stores are going into the back to look for toys and putting out overstock that they have. I went to a Target yesterday and got well, I cut my hand on a box that belonged to Stella from Rainbow High. Series 2 Stella. The boxes were destroyed. There was a ton of crystals out. I don't know where the store got these things from, but their shelves were near empty. So I'm assuming they just randomly found some stuff in the back that they never put out. And I'm thinking that's why people are suddenly finding the Creep Productions in stores. Just certain Walmarts that never put them out finding them now. I don't know. That kind of went on a tangent. <laughs> Sorry. But basically, the Cree productions are very well made. I just wish that they had been easier for people to get because I see people pay $100 for the Cree production Draculaura on the regular. These dolls were $26 when they released. There's no reason for that. Not to mention they came out this year. But yeah, the Cree productions were a very messy release. Overall, it was a nice line, but a lot of people weren't able to get them, which sucks. I also want to call attention to Haunt Couture. Despite the high price, these dolls are really nice. I definitely think they should have been cheaper so that the regular collector could afford them. Because let's face it, most people cannot afford to spend $75 per doll. 
This is a very expensive picture, especially considering the resale prices. Overall, though, I really like Han Couture. I think the dolls turned out really nice, and despite me already having Claudine on the list, I wanted to call attention to Draculaura and Frankie, too. Frankie is so nice, I just wish that their doll ended up looking more like the prototype that we see here. Because the release doll, unfortunately, does not have the same face as this one. And Draculaura is cool. I also want to call attention to Voltages. This doll was cool, but once again, very overpriced. Ugh, I'm just talking about prices too much here. Alright, we're gonna ignore the price stuff. We're just gonna talk about the doll. Voltages is an honorable mention because I like this doll, but not enough to put her on the main list. She's very pretty. I wish that this is the face that Haunt Couture Frankie had because they really did a great job with Voltages' screening. Yeah, overall, I just didn't want to put this doll on the list. I like her, but not enough to put her in my top five. Maybe she'd be like sixth place? I don't know. It'd probably be Haunt Couture Frankie, actually. My next two honorable mentions are Holiday Draculaura and Real Drama Claudine. I wanted to put Real Drama Claudine on the list, but I realized it would be kind of unfair to have two of the same character on the list. Not to mention I like Laguna more, so Laguna made the cut and this Claudine did not. I still really like Real Drama Claudine, though. She turned out absolutely gorgeous. Um, I don't think I have that much to say. One of my only complaints about this doll is whatever hair type they used for her is very hard to manage. Like, no matter what I do with it, it just still has this frizziness to it. Boil wash it, it's still a little frizzy. You try to, like, keep the curls while you're washing it, it still ends up looking weird. I don't know what to do with it. Gorgeous doll, I just wish I was better at managing the hair, so if you guys have any tips, feel free to drop them in the comments. As for Holiday Draculaura, I really like this doll. My only issue is that her face looks nothing like the prototype here. And it's hard to explain, like, why they don't look the same. They just don't. Um, overall, I like the doll. I'd say the only other thing that I would change would be... Um, I don't know, maybe the dress should have been... They should have committed to the longer dress more. Because she has like a very short dress on underneath the big long train they gave her. I just think they should have committed to the long dress look more. You know, like giving her like a full-on long dress instead of just giving her like this like shorter dress underneath. I don't know. It would have been nice to see her in something a bit more elegant, I guess. I don't know. Even if that's not the Monster High brand. She's a holiday doll. So she's already, like, not on theme, you know? They could have, like, done something more with it, I guess. Overall, I love her a lot, though. So I'm not really complaining. I'm just saying I think it would have been cool to get a more grand look from her. Not that this isn't grand. Look, you get what I'm saying. Also, my final honorable mention is Dracula. Skelector Dracula. This is actually the only Skelector doll that I liked this year. And even then, I do feel like she's a little bland. I didn't really like the Universal Original Monsters series. I feel like they stuck a little too clo clo closely to the source material. I said close. They stuck a little too closely to the source material for my liking. I like the other Skelectors, like Beetlejuice, Pennywise, eh, what else? What else do I like? Greta. Greta. I like those three a lot because they allowed themselves to deviate from the source material and make something different, something unique. Like, this is a gender-bent Dracula, which is different from the source material, which that I do like. I think they did a wonderful job with her face. But, I don't know. This one just doesn't feel very monster high to me. I like her, though. I do still like this doll a lot. I just wish that they had done something more. And I can't put into words what I would want more to be. Uh, it just feels like this is kind of what we were all expecting from a Dracula. And it's exactly what we got. It would have been nice to have our expectations subverted somehow. The shoes are cool as fuck, though. Those are some awesome shoes. If you don't know, she's got a little coffin shoe that opens to reveal, like, a little mini Dracula inside. That's sick as hell. That's awesome. Yeah, it's about my only gripe. Overall, though, great doll. With that very long-winded segment out of the way, we're on to number one. Allow me to catch you guys up to speed on what our rankings have been so far. Fifth place, fourth place, third place, second place, and finally, are you guys ready to see first place? I'm ashamed at how basic first place is, but 
I really don't think any doll that was released this year tops this one. First place goes to Haunt Couture Draculaura. This doll is just so pretty, it's criminal. Like, genuinely, this doll is insane. It's criminal how good she is. I, that's the only way I can describe it. All of her pieces slap. Everything that she comes with is great. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like this is peak performance. This is peak Monster High. Draculaura eats up the rest of the Haunt Couture line by so much, it's insane. You put her next to any of the other dolls and you just wonder. Like, <laughs> you just you just wonder, you know? You, you just look at it and you're like, yes, I am wondering. Like, that's how you feel. I love her dress. I love her shirt that comes underneath the dress with all the little bats printed on it. She's got the, she's got like a little ring on her finger. Her backpack was so good that there was an independent artist who remade it first. And then even Hot Topic is selling it now with a matching wallet. They're selling a cape. They're selling an identical-ish dress. Like this doll was so good that all of her stuff just about is now available for you to buy at Hot Topic because people liked it so much. <laughs> if that's not a testament to how good this doll is, I, I don't know what is. This is Draculaura's second collector doll. And if I'm being honest, this outshined her original one by a lot. <laughs> Although her original collector doll is still really good. I don't want to say that this one is better, but this one definitely got a lot more attention than the original did. I remember there were people who didn't like the original one. There's still people who don't, obviously, but I don't know. The original collector, Draculaura, that I'm talking about is the 2015 one, by the way. The one where she's tall and has a gorgeous face. Mm, I love that Draculaura. This one is really good, though. I feel like they're kind of on the same level, almost. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. But this Draculaura is just incredible. I feel like they did such a great job with her design. <clears throat> God, what is wrong with my voice today? I don't know. I really don't feel like there's anything I can say about her that I haven't already. But I just love how she turned out. I think they did a great job with her. <laughs> I really like her. She's just gorgeous. She has a gorgeous face. While the rooting was a little thin, I do like how they did it with the mostly black hair and only a couple pink streaks. That's like my ideal Draculaura rooting, if I'm being honest. Like this one just felt like overkill, which is why I don't like it. Like it's overkill with the pink. This is good. This is peak performance. This is too much pink. That's my monkey brain take anyway. <laughs> like even her necklace is like a bat. It's a bat with the wings wrapped around her neck as the chain. That's so cool. I also really like her belt with all the individual heart charms hanging off of it. Just, God, <laughs> it's so good. This doll is so good. But with that, we've gone over my top five Monster High dolls of the year. I'll gladly make a video like this again next year. It's really fun to just look back at all the stuff we got this year and talk about it. Yeah. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was fun to make. And as always, I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!